testing, testing. Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank each and every one of you for taking the time out of your busy schedules to join us here at our first annual Jamboree kickoff for Cattle Parish Public Schools. Uh, we are very fortunate to have an opportunity to kick off another football season. We appreciate the job that each and every one of our coaches do. We know the dedication and uh, that they put forth every single day, not only to prepare these young men for the season, but to make sure that they are prepared to play the most important game, and that is the game of life. Football is often said to, you know, build character. I disagree with that statement. I believe that football reveals character. Football, once you get out between those white lines, football reveals who you truly are. It only takes a short time in practice for us to find out whether or not you're dedicated, whether or not you're a competitor, or whether or not you're going to tuck your tail and run. Football reveals all of those things. But it also gives another opportunity for young men to uh, make adjustments in their lives, and it teaches us how to become better and stronger men. So I'd like to say thank you to the coaches. Uh, I want to acknowledge our board members, Mr. Lloyd Thompson in the back, Dr. D uh, Dozart, and I believe our board president, uh, Ms. Tremell, just walked in. Thank you all for taking time out your day. We are privileged to have, uh, I believe he's kind of an icon for local high school athletics, Mr. Cavell, who's going to kind of guide us through this process. For those of you that have not had an opportunity to meet him, uh, if you talk to him, he's seen a lot of high school athletics in this parish. He knows a lot about the history. He does a great job on his radio show, and we're very privileged to have him here today. So Mr. Cavell, if you would come forward and lead us through this process, thank you. Thank you, Anthony, and I told you before, Mr. Cavell's my dad, I'm just Charlie, and I'm just uh, happy to be here. Again, welcome to everybody, thank you for being here. This is, uh, I'm glad we're doing this, and hopefully we can build on this and bring all the teams and playing football playing schools in Caddo Parish back. One day we'll be playing, hopefully one day all together right here on a Thursday, Friday, like we used to do a long, long time ago like to see that happen again but this is a, a the step in that right direction for those of you that don't know me i am charlie cavell i'm the athletic coordinator at bozier parish community college uh, but i've also been fortunate to be the voice of bird high school football for 20 almost 25 years and uh, it's uh, i'd like to thank mr tisdale for uh, asking me to MC this event as well as I need to thank my boss at, at Bipsy, uh, John Rennie, our AD, for allowing me to be here today. Um, like all of you, I love high school football. You know, I, I've been around the game since I was played it a long, long time ago and, and was fortunate enough to stay in it in, in my capacity, either in sports information or in broadcasting. And I, I, I love it. And, and whether it's, you know, being there on a Friday night, being at a pep rally, there's nothing like witnessing these young men rep represent themselves, their schools, their friends, their families, and play for the love of the game. And, uh, you know, I've had the opportunity many times, people ask me why you keep going back to, why you stay in high school football, and it's for those reasons. I love it, I love the passion, I love, uh, that this is the purest form of football in my opinion that you know a majority of well maybe not all of you guys but the majority of you or your teammates this is the last opportunity y'all will have to play high school football or football organized football with pads on and going full speed and there's something to be said about that and I, I you know I love being in a in a booth being able to call the action on uh, Friday night and fortunately, I've had that opportunity. Uh, let's do some house cleaning real quick. First of all, our jamborees get started tonight uh, over at Lee Hedges Stadium with the Woodlawn Knights and the Southwood Cowboys. They'll kick things off with the junior varsity at 6 o'clock. And then tomorrow, we have a full slate of games. Uh, Friday, August 30th at Lee Hedges Stadium, Captain Shreve and Bird kind of gives us uh, 
a snippet of what I consider to be the best rivalry in Shreveport. Don't you know, guys? I'm I'm biased, so understand that. But uh, the freshman will kick off at five. JV varsity to follow six and seven approximately. Over at Jerry Burton Stadium up at Northwood, uh, the Northwood Falcons. They're going to do a three-way jamboree with the Huntington Raiders and the Green Oaks Giants. That'll get kicked off at uh, 6 o'clock up in Blanchard. And then up in uh, Vivian, uh, the Booker T. Washington Lions and the North Caddo Rebels will get things started at North Caddo Stadium at 6 o'clock with the JV and the varsity to follow. So that's the slate of the jamborees here in Caddo Parish. Um, quick reminder on your seats and uh, out front, most of you saw that uh, we're uh, you know, right here on September 13th and 14th, the Landers Dodge Battle on the Border High School Football Showcase. This is the ninth year, Battle on the Border 9, and three of our Caddo Parish schools are participating in it this year, uh, and so uh, that's a big deal. You know, Bird is playing West Monroe to kick things off at 5.30, and then uh, Woodlawn and Captain Shreve will close out uh, the nightcap on Saturday. So just, uh, you know, the battle on the border. Tickets for uh, general admission are $10. Uh, the club level up here, $50. And uh, can't beat it. Great high school football. And uh, my, you know, really compliment Patrick Wesley and the folks at SPAR for bringing, of course, Landers for bringing this event here. All right, well, enough from me. Let's get on with our program and uh, hear from the the men that y'all came here to see uh, see and hear. First off is uh, Bird High School, the Yellow Jackets in District 1 5A. Bird is coming off a 7-3 and three season and a trip to the Division 1 playoffs. Coach Mike Suggs is the Dean of Area Coaches as he enters his 30th season at, uh, at Bird on Line Avenue. Mike, God, you're old. <laughs> Anyway, I've had the pleasure of working with Mike Suggs for 25 of those years, and I'm not 100% sure he feels the same way, but uh, it's been a, been a pleasure. A mutual friend of ours asked me to send him Bird's schedule for the 2019 season, so I did, and after looking at it, he called me and said, man, I called Suggs and told him he needs to fire whoever the heck is making the schedule because the first three games for the Yellow Jackets – they travel to New Orleans to open up against Brother Martin and then come home right here at Independence, as you just heard me say, against West Monroe. And then in week three, the last non-district game, they play the Cavalry Cavaliers. And uh, so the first three games of the, the season for Bird is, uh, is pretty daunting. But as long as I've known Mike, he's always believed that playing good teams prepares his team for the tough road ahead and uh, the tough road they'll face, particularly in District 1 5A. Well, let me get out of the way and turn it over to my good friend, Bird Head Coach, Mike Suggs. Thank you, Charlie. I guess they want me, and Gatlin ought to come up here beside me, too, and let us, <laughs> let us talk first because they know we're going to need a nap after eating that good lunch that they provided for us. So they get us out of the way so we can sit over at the end of the table and none of you look when we're taking a little nap. But first of all, I'd like to thank Mr. Tisdale uh, for having this. I think... Uh, it's been, a long, it's been needed for a long time. Anything that we can do to promote these wonderful schools of the parish and even more importantly, to support our young men and women that play athletics in Caddo Parish. The more uh, exposure we can get to them and their schools and their programs and their teams, are, you know, it's better and better for them, it's better for the school, it's better for athletics, it's better getting more people involved in athletics. I won't tell you when, but I remember years ago when I was in high school, you could wake up during football season or during any season when you had the Times and the Shreveport Journal that there was going to be an article and a picture in the paper of some high school athlete playing in a game or at practice every single day, almost all year long. And, and that's been missed. I think these, these young athletes need to be promoted more and, uh, and anything we can do to to promote that, I think it's a great thing. So I thank Anthony for having this. I think he had a little format he wanted us to go by and, and talk. Charlie took some of my talking points there, but but that's okay. Uh, key losses from last year, we lost uh, 
eight starters offensively, and of course a big loss for us was Charlie Barham, a fullback who rushed for over 1,400 yards. We also lost uh, Nick Irwin, a three-year starter at offensive line, uh, who was academic, composite academic All-State young man, uh, and was a leader for us up front. Defensively, we've got a good group coming back. We've got seven to eight starters coming back, along with quite a few other players that they got to play a lot for us, so we feel good about the defensive side of the football where we're at right now. And offensively, we think we had a good spring and a good summer, and and we're moving forward. Uh, you know, scrimmages and jamborees. We've had the scrimmage last week. We've got a jamboree tomorrow night. For us, they're just tune-ups to getting ready for the first ball game. As Charlie said, we have to go down to New Orleans week one, and and that's where our focus is right now. That's what we've been practicing for and getting ready for going to give us a little adversity getting on a bus traveling five and a half hours down to play the first ball game and uh, you know we think it'll be good for our kids good for uh, our future learning to play against learning to get on the road and travel and play against a quality football team like brother Martin in week one is uh, is going to be special for us so we're looking forward to that trip and looking forward to the season and uh, also I want to wish everybody good luck we've got a great set of coaches here in the parish great schools Great young men playing. Look for great things out of all of you this year. Good luck. You want to introduce Oh. Just introduce you guys. Oh, that wasn't anything. <laughs> With me today, I have a couple players. Trey Lester, offensive tackle. James Perenio, linebacker, defensive end. When you get as long as in the tooth as Mike Suggs, uh, you, you have these coaching plateaus that you reach along the way. You, you know, like having your son play for you, having guys that were assistants coach against you, and having guys who played for you coach against you. Well, our next coach, Bryant Sepulveda from Captain Shreve, he checks off two of those boxes on that list. He played for Mike Suggs. He, he was an assistant coach for Mike Suggs and now has been on the uh, opposing sidelines for a few years uh, across the way at uh, Captain Shreve. With virtually everyone back from last year's playoff team, expectations are very high over on Kings Highway. And to tell you more about the Captain Shreve Gators, their head coach, Bryant Sepulveda. Uh, kind of, Coach Suggs kind of hit on it, but I do think this is a great opportunity uh, that Mr. Tisdale and the Parish put on to showcase everything that's going on positive in Cattle Parish. So I hope this becomes a yearly deal. I think anytime, you, like Coach said, you can recognize athletes and put them out in front of people, very, very great deal for the Parish, each kid, each school, uh, and hopefully this continues. Uh, what, kind of what Charlie said, though, talking about Coach Suggs, that again, he took over uh, my senior year. And uh, I thought he'd been coaching 30 years at that point. Uh, at that time, he was old at that point. Uh, but now that I'm old, getting older, uh, he really wasn't that old. Uh, I've been doing a long time, respect him a whole lot. Uh, you know, last year we kind of had you know, a breakout year. We've been working on it, uh, kind of building and building. Uh, ended up going eight and four last year. Uh, won the first round playoff game against St. Amont, then ran into West Monroe uh, round two. Uh, we have, what the six starters back on offense. We lost four of the five offensive line. That's kind of our need. That's what we're trying to build, uh, but have a lot of speed coming back. We won four by one in the state uh, and the four by one at the 5A state meet. Uh, all four of those guys play football, so have a little bit of speed coming back. Uh, not necessarily the two guys I brought with me. They weren't on that team. Uh, they're more hitters than anything. Uh, so have some speed coming back. Really excited about those guys. Uh, three of those guys play offense, one of them plays defense. Defensively, have a lot coming back, have seven starters coming back, plus uh, you know, four or five other guys who rotated and got a lot of reps. So again, expectations are very high, um, you know, and, and we're embracing that attention. You know, like I said, we talk about expectations all the time and embracing those things and, uh, you know, looking to ha have a chance to make a run this year. That's about all. Oh, uh, the two kids brought with number one, Darius Grant, quarterback, and number 44, Garrett Hargon, linebacker. Anybody got any questions for Coach Spalvado? Yep. Thank you, Ron. Appreciate it. 
appreciate it. Thank you. Our next uh, team in school is Green Oaks, and coming off a five and six record and a playoff appearance in 2018, Green Oaks is looking to contend for the District 1-3A crown this year. Green Oaks is, has a tremendous history, as we all know, of producing top-notch talent in players like Tredavious White most recently. But you'll want to remember the names of Keith Boom Baker and Joseph Mason. And to tell, you, tell us more about those young men and the rest of the Green Oaks Giants is Coach Terrence Isaac. Good afternoon. Uh, I want to thank you guys for having us. I think this is awesome right here. Let me first start off by introducing my players. I got Keith Boomtown Baker and, and Joseph Mason. He'll be... He committed to uh, Louisiana Tech, so he'll be signed. He'll be an early signee, and he'll be signing in December. So proud of both of those guys. I think uh, based off last year, I think we have a lot to uh, we have a lot to be proud of, but we have a lot of work to do moving forward. Uh, we did some things at Green Oaks last year that hasn't been done in a long time. So uh, first non-losing season in 16 years, we were able to host a playoff game uh, last year. Uh, we're proud of that, but we're not satisfied. We had some tough games last year. Uh, starting off, we uh, going up against Haynesville. We lost against Haynesville. Last play of the game, they caught a touchdown back. Uh, we had another tough playoff loss. Joseph couldn't get the kick uh, to win the game, but um, you know, <laughs> but uh, we'll keep working and keep moving. I think moving forward, we uh, we're young on the offensive line. We're really, really young on the offensive line. We have one returning starter. But on defense is where we're looking to just really improve. We have uh, every guy coming back except for one. We lost one. So we expect to be really good on the defense side of the ball. But uh, looking forward, we have a tough schedule coming up, really, really tough. Uh, first first couple of, coming out against Shreve, then we have Northwood, and then we have BT for the Soul Bowl. So a uh, tough schedule coming out, but we're excited by the challenge. We're excited by the opportunity that presents itself. And uh, just looking to have a great year. Any questions for Coach? Thank you. Hey, Coach. All right, moving right along. Uh, every time I hear the word Raiders, I keep wanting to hear or looking around to hear the incredible music and the amazing voice of NFL Films, John Facenda belting out the autumn wind is a raider, pillaging just for fun. I don't know if you, have, if you young guys haven't heard that. YouTube it. It's well worth it. It's awesome. It's been done by NFL Films. Steve Sable wrote it, and then uh, he uh, voiced it over. I've only met Steve Dennis one time, and that was uh, a couple of years ago at a LHSAA officials meeting over at uh, Airline to go over new rules. But However, every time I hear Steve, and I hear him frequently on the radio or see him uh, on TV, uh, right away you notice his passion for the game, a joy of coaching, and an enthusiasm about mentoring young men. And simply put, he loves what he does. And so to tell us about Doradas is Huntington head coach Steve Dennis. Good afternoon or good morning. Uh, we'd like to thank Mr. Tisdale and everybody in the parish, Ms. Robinson as well, for all the work that they did to put this together. Um, we're excited. Actually, uh, we read them the autumn winds <laughs> last week before our scrimmage. So they, uh, they got a little taste of that. I didn't do as well as, uh, I believe that's one of the bone, is it? John Facenda. Yes, yes, sir. Did not do as well as him. Um, we're excited to be here today, excited about football season kicking off. You know, it's just a special time in the South uh, when you get to gear up and play football. We're excited about what the fall holds for us at Huntington High School. Uh, we return a lot of starters on offense, about six or seven. Uh, we'd like to kind of start off and point out one of those starters is here today, our quarterback, Jarrell uh, Joseph. Jarrell started about the last three games of the year for us last year. Very excited about what he has for the future. Um, offensively, played a young offensive line last year. They have tremendously grown this year. And so excited about what that side of the ball's got going. Defensively, we replaced a lot of guys that played a lot of snaps for us. Uh, two D tackles, Tremont Caldwell and Deshaun Darnell that are playing in college now. Um, so we got some work to do over there, but one of the leaders that's going to help us get it done is Michael Moten. 
He's here today with us. Raise your hand. Michael's uh, kind of like our quarterback of the defense. He's been a three-year starter for us. And so we're excited to kind of see where this thing goes. We, uh, what they've heard me say a lot, of, uh, a lot of times throughout the years, we've plowed a lot of hard ground over the last two years, and we're expecting a harvest this year. So uh, excited. Wanted to thank again everybody that's put this event together. We have a lot of great things going on in Cattle Parish, and I think this highlights it. Thank you all. I'm, a, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but I believe something strange was afoot uh, with the realignment of District 1 2A. If I didn't know any better, I, sw I would swear that uh, it wasn't done by the LHSAA, that it was done by the Louisiana Department of Tourism or Wildlife and Fisheries. Because if you look at the schools, and there's only four of them, uh, if you look at the schools in District 1 2A, you, you have Darbone Woods, right next to Lake Darbone State Park. You have Jonesboro Hodge, a hop, skip, and a jump from Caney Creek Reservoir and Jimmy Davis State Park. You got Lake Lakeside, Lake Bistineau State Park, and of course, North Caddo, right between Caddo Lake and Black Bayou. So to give us a fall fishing report and to tell us also a little bit about the North Caddo Rebels, their head coach and a good friend of mine, Johnny Cavanaugh. Funny guy, funny guy. Uh, second year as head coach at North Caddo. Uh, we're looking to, to make progress. This, this is when we need to, uh, to get things moving in the right direction. Uh, got a senior quarterback that I brought with me, Mr. Jaden Carter. He rushed for uh, 1,200 yards last year. He's going to run the show for us this year. Uh, you know, I fully expect him to take charge. We made a decision on offense to diversify a little bit. Last year, we were about 90% run. That's, that's just kind of been my MO. That's what I've done. We wanted to keep the ball on the ground. But we made a commitment this year that we're going we're gonna to be able to throw the ball a little bit. And he's got some skill guys uh, on the outside that he can do that with. LJ Dixon, Cole Copeland, uh, Austin Carnes uh, are all guys who can catch footballs and do big things. Uh, so we're expecting to not be so one-dimensional. We're expecting to be able to, to throw the ball around a little bit, and we're excited about that. We think that can take our offense a little further in a, in a little better direction. Uh, also brought Jaden Mora, who's my uh, starting middle linebacker with me, number 40 over here. <laughs> Senior leader of the team, you know, small in stature, 170, 175, but dude is a sledgehammer. Uh, you know, he, he, he fills those holes on defense, and I put him at fullback, and he, you know, best ISO blocker I've ever seen when I put him at fullback. He's a, he's a sledgehammer. I mean, that's honest to God, he's a sledgehammer. So we're proud to have him, and he's surrounded by a bunch of other good linebackers. On defense, uh, we've got uh, Trey Hurd, who's a junior, really talented on the outside, and Nick Henderson, our other outside linebacker, and then two seniors in the middle, uh, Jaden Mora and uh, DJ Justice, who are going to do good things. It's a, it's a talented group, and that'll be the leaders of our defense, along with a really solid defensive line. We're a little young in the secondary, not tremendously, but a little young. Uh, got a couple of starters back and a couple of new guys, um, but we expect to be solid. All really good athletes that will be able to, to handle themselves. Um, I know Charlie made fun of our new district, but to me, when that, when that came out, all I saw was opportunity. All I saw was opportunity. I got, called my guys together in December and just said, look, it's there. Let's take it. Let's go win it. Um, you know, there, there is nobody in our district that we can't beat. We've gone head-to-head -head with Lakeside, and, and they've gone both ways over the last few years. That'll be one of our big rivals. Jonesboro Hodge is coming up from 1A to 2A into our district. And again, a school that we've, we've gone head-to-head -head with and, and come out on top more often than not when I've been at, at North Caddo. And then Darbone Woods, who is an improving football program, uh, but we should be able to compete with them. There's no reason to think that North Caddo shouldn't be in the hunt for the, uh, for the District 1-2A title, and I'll be disappointed if we're not... Uh, if we're not right there at the end of it, you know. So uh, that's that's our expectation, and it has been for the whole off season. It's kind of fueled our off season. Um, there's things that North Caddo hadn't done in a long time. We hadn't won a playoff game since 2003. So that's a goal. That's something that's going to get done this year. Uh, again, district championship was that same 2003 season with, with Jerry Bird as the head coach. 
Um, they, won a, they won a first round playoff game and they won a district championship and it hadn't been done since then. Uh, but our goal and our intent is to change that and to change it this year. So uh, these guys have worked hard. These two young men that I brought with me, they've led off season workouts. Um, guys like our, my big left tackle, Jamon Griffin, has turned into, I mean, a tank, a monster, and, and someone that our entire team respects. Um, you know, these two guys can tell you when Jamon says something, that's how it is. You don't, you don't question it. That's, that's what our team's going to do, and that's, that's what's going to happen. And uh, that's the kind of leaders you need. That's the kind of young men you need uh, if you're going to do special things that haven't been done in a long time, and that's what we plan to do. Uh, Mr. Tisdale, thank you for putting on this event. This is great, great facility, great event, tremendous food, ladies. We appreciate it all, and uh, go Rebs. Thank you, John. Good luck to y'all. I've known Jim Gatlin for quite a while now. I did some Parkway games. I live in South Bossier, uh, for full disclosure, and did some Parkway games back when he was turning the Panther football program from a perennial doormat into a constant contender. Uh, since he's been at Northwood, he's turned the Falcons into a district title winner, contender every year, a playoff participant year in and year out, and this year is no different. Uh, for those of us old enough to remember playing pinball, expectations uh, are that the scoreboard at uh, Jerry Burton Stadium will look similar to that of a Bally's machine. So to tell us more about his Northwood Falcons, head coach Jim Gatlin. Thank you all. Mr. Tisdale, appreciate you. This is fun. Uh, ladies, thank you for uh, fixing the food. Board members, appreciate y'all coming. Media, appreciate y'all being here. And uh, first of all, all you athletes, congratulations to y'all to be invited. If your coaches invited you to come up here, that means they think a lot about you. So that, that's, that's, that's character right there. Whether you win, lose, whatever happens. These coaches thought enough about you to, to represent their school Everybody in here has got to be a quality person, so congratulations for being an invite. I'd like to invite the, or introduce the two that I brought, Luke Bogan, our quarterback, and, and, and Luke's been very successful with us over the years. And uh, uh, one thing, me and Luke, and, you know, Luke was banged up a little bit last year, and now he's 100%, and uh, we're glad of that. And uh, there's, I think there's a lot of quarterbacks in the state that may not have even played last year with what he went through and uh, he was able and battled and still had a good year. Um, Armand Coatney, and I think some of you players can understand this and coaches, Armand may not look familiar because he wore number 12 last year. He's one of our better defensive tackles, controlled the defensive line of scrimmage, and we came to him and asked him, said, Armand, we gotta, you got to help us on the offensive line. I mean, we get, we got to have your help. You're too good an athlete not to be on both sides of the ball. Well, to give up that number 12 and uh, go to 67, you know, that, that sort of touched him a little bit, but he was a great teammate and he did that, volunteered to do that, to go from 12 to 67 so he could play on the offensive line and we appreciate that up at Northwood High School. At Northwood High School we've got some high expectations for this year. We were 12 and 1 last year, lost to Warren Easton. Now that is sort of hard to go through New Orleans, guys. You cut players and coaches know with that car and Warren Easton that's sitting down there in those open enrollment charter schools, which can't figure out how they're in the public school sector, but that's just the way it is, man. And uh, so we, we, we tell Bird they got to go somewhere, but we don't tell Warren Easton and Carl they got to go anywhere, you know. So it's tough, but we have high expectations. Uh, we got to stay healthy, just like all of our programs do, I'm sure. Got to keep our kids healthy and uh, make it. And uh, we've got eight or nine starters coming back on defense. I got about eight or nine starters coming back on offense. And some of the people that we put in offensively, I think are gonna be big playmakers. Um, got a couple of D1 tackles that are uh, on that offensive line. And uh, that makes a big difference. And we feel a little, little we feel real good there. And uh, just, we, we look for good things. It starts up at the line of scrimmage. We think we're going, that's one of our stronger points. And um, just uh, we're looking forward to high school. I've, I've did, this is my 38th year, guys, to coach football, high school football. There's not a better job in the world. There may be some of you guys out there that go off to college and, and want to be football coaches. And I 
I would fully recommend you think about that. Uh, Boomtown, I know you'd be an excellent coach. I really do, man. You know, so, uh, you know, think about that. It's a good future. It's a good career. And uh, it's been good to all these men up here, I can promise you. Thank you all. If there's one team in District 1-5A that often gets overlooked, it's the Southwood Cowboys. However, it's one team that could really play a factor in the district race. It's a newly reconfigured District 1-5A. Um, Benton has moved up from 4A. Natchitoches Central, who was one of the original members of 1-5A, is back in. It's a big district, a uh, tough district. It, every week is a grind, but if there's one team that uh, could really throw a wrench in a loophole and is looking to do so. It's the Southwood Cowboys. To tell us more about his Cowboys, his head coach, Anthony McLean. You know, it didn't take us long to figure it out that he and I were going to wind up going last. So, um, you know, a lot of the things I plan on saying have already been said, but some of them I think still need to be restated to you. First of all, all the young men, you are special. That's what Coach Gallon just told you. But more importantly, do something special with your lives. Everybody understand that? That's kind of one of the things that you guys can and you will have the opportunity to do. So please choose to do that. Uh, thank you, Mr. Tisdale and the groups of media that have come out to be a part of this. It's kind of a big deal, kind of fun. I mean, I think it'd be more fun if it was even fuller. We have more people here and a little bit louder, maybe a little bit more fun. So speaking of uh, fun, I'm going to pick on a couple guys in here. I really am pulling for Coach Gatlin to keep coaching and Coach Suggs to keep coaching, because as long as they're there, I see that I'm kind of getting into the older side of this deal. So I need those two guys to keep working hard every day coming to work, because at least I can still kind of be in the middle. I, you know, I, I don't know. So hopefully I played for Coach Suggs when he was at Southwood a long time ago. He probably didn't even remember that. It's been a while back. But, uh, you know, he always used to say one thing in class. Yeah, I remember something from his class. Go figure. That, that surprises me a little bit, too. But... Anytime you didn't know the answer to a question, he said, you had to respond with, I don't know, but I want to learn. And I think that's a life lesson that can be taught in a classroom. He may not even remember he used to say that uh, in there, but, you know, that's kind of a big deal. Um, I think we should all be excited about football, playing football, and I, I think football is one of the greatest sports there is out there. Uh, we have a quarterback that was playing wide out. Damian Beckman, would you please stand up? All right. And uh, inside linebacker Kevin Pettis, would you please stand up? A couple of things about those guys. Uh, probably my favorite thing about Kevin Pettis is it doesn't matter how hot it is, every day when I walk on the football field, before we start practice, he walks over to me, hey, coach, you know I love you. And I say, hey, man, you know I love you too. And that makes my day every day. And you guys can make people's day like that as well. And uh, to me, that's a big deal. It is about relationships in life. And so we got to continue to grow and we got to continue to go out there and work with people who, who we want to be around and, and work together. Uh, Beck didn't start off playing quarterback. He was a wide receiver, had big dreams of being a wide receiver. And, you know, we had a little need last year. Last year we had some injuries. It was pretty bad. I mean, we lose center, quarterback, and a tailback. That makes it tough on offense whenever you lose all three of those guys, you know, really before you start the season. So went through quite a few quarterbacks, kind of finally settled in on one. So we have, we have some great expectations out of him. Um, you know, but here's kind of deal with, with football, with everything else you guys are dealing with, you know, and on the way over here I told these guys, you know, I remember a little line from the movie Tombstone. I don't know if any of you guys have watched that before, but uh, Wyatt Earp is standing over uh, Doc Hollywood basically on his deathbed, and Wyatt Earp says, man, I just wish we could have lived a normal life. And uh, old Doc Hollywood looks at him and he said, you just got life. Life is what you have. So whatever you have in your life, that is your life. That is your normal. So make the most out of it. Be something special. Whenever you're done with high school athletics, be something special. Once you're done with college or whatever it is you desire, continue to do special things in your life, and you'll have a huge impact on a lot of people. Anybody have any questions? Did we get it all right? Good to go. You got something left to say, I hope, Coach, because I know you're going to be next. Now, I know they said a whole bunch of things that were great, but these guys do a great job. All these coaches up here, they invest a lot of time, take a lot of time away from their families in order to instill in the families that are represented in this room. And that is a big deal. And so to that, thank you to these guys and thank you to you guys as well. Thank you. Well, uh, CJ, you're going to have to hold on just a little more, you know. But uh, 
Our next group from District 1 4A is the Booker T. Washington Lions, and Coach Tony Relliford is entering his first full season as BTW's head coach after spending last year as the interim. The Lions won only one game last season, but with eight returning starters on defense, seven on offense, Coach Relliford is looking to restore the roar over at BTW in 2019. To tell us some more about the BTW Lions, Coach Tony Relliford. Thank you, sir. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Cattle Parish Athletic Department, Mrs. Hisdale. I'd like to thank my uh, school board rep, uh, Mr. Lord Thompson, and everyone else uh, here today. Um, we at BTW, we have faced some challenges over the past uh, few years. I'm sure everyone is evident uh, with the merger we've had some time ago with uh, BTW and Fair Park. Uh, that, was a, that was a trial and error basis uh, deal for us. Uh, but now what we have we have a family, you know, everybody has uh, obstacles they have to overcome and we're uh, overcoming that. Uh, last year, uh, our team was very young as well. Uh, have a group of guys, uh, a great group of young men. Uh, on the defensive line, we have eight seniors that are gonna be starting for us. And uh, and on the offensive side of the ball, we have uh, seven juniors. I have a couple of those guys with me here today. Uh, Anthony Jones Jr., our quarterback. Okay and Contavious Jefferson, who we call KT, uh, wide receiver. Uh, in just a short period of time, I've watched those young men grow. Uh, they all started last year. Sophomore was really their first year really playing high school football because of the merger. We had very few freshmen came out at all. So these are basically just uh, second year guys. And uh, KT, for instance, last year had nine touchdowns as a sophomore. We're looking for great things from he and Anthony to, uh, to have to hook up all throughout the season. Uh, but more or less what we have, and we talked about all last year about closing the gap, being more competitive. Uh, we can't talk about that same thing anymore in terms of closing the gap, all right? I share with the guys, there's no more excuses. The gaps have been closed, all right? So rather than being competitive, we don't want to finish at a one in nine. Uh, there's no such thing as closing a gap and finishing it uh, below that. We have great expectations for this season, and uh, we would like to return to the state playoffs. That's our goal for this upcoming season. Uh, on last year, we lost a young man, uh, Malik Patterson. He was a lot for us. You know, he uh, played quarterback, running back. But we, we have definitely reloaded in that area right there. So we're more than capable of actually uh, scoring some points this year. Uh, but the strength of our uh, team should lie in our defense. When you have a leadership of eight uh, starting seniors over there, it should truly make a difference. So we're excited. Uh, we look forward to things to come. And hopefully at the end of the season, uh, we can stand here and say that we've had a, a great season. Well, last but not least, certainly not least, is uh, the Woodlawn Knights. And um, I remember calling a couple of Bird Marshall, Texas games back uh, when there was a young Mavericks quarterback zigging, zagging, dashing, darting, and whizzing through the Bird Jackets defense. Uh, C.J. Bird has some big shoes to fill at Woodlawn in replacing Jerwin Wilson, who brought a level of respect back to Woodlawn High School, which I'm sure C.J. is wanting and ready to build upon. To tell us more about the Knights, head coach C.J. Bird. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, Mr. Tisdale, Mr. Tisdale, thank you very much for uh, having us, all the media here and everyone else that's here. Thank you so much. I'm very, very excited about this upcoming fo uh, football season. Um, it is my first year, and um, we have some young talent, and I'm very excited about everything that's going on. Um, I have with me two guys that have been leaders on and off the field. Uh, first, Brian Stewart. He's an athlete for us. Uh, Jester Jr. is electric, and he's one of our leaders. Um, stays late, he's early, has a million and seven questions for me, so great guy. Um, then I have one of our senior uh, safeties, Jamarion Tillman. <clears throat> he, he's come out of nowhere. Um, he's been able to do everything we uh, ask him to do. He is the quarterback of the defense, and he knows exactly what's going on every play. Um, and he's just an exciting player to watch, and I'm very excited about uh, what we have going on. Um, 
they've been wonderful. The kids have been wonderful, wonderful and they've embraced me with uh, open arms. So um, all I'm saying is I'm excited about what's going on and, and I'm ready to get it going. All right, thank you, Coach. Um, I'd like to wish all of you, from Brian all the way down to Mike and in between, the best of luck in this 2019 season uh, and, and good luck. And hopefully, as uh, I believe it was Anthony said, everybody stays, stays relatively healthy and, and, uh, and good to go throughout the season. Good luck to all you young men. You know, the dedication, the hard work, the sweat that you pour in now will come out and you'll be bene it'll benefit you later on in life. Do you have any parting words you want to say before we All right. Well, first of all, uh, you keep telling me to say just, that you're just Charlie, but you, yeah. uh, you're Mr. Cavill to me because uh, you deserve that. Uh, I'd like to extend a very hearty thank you for taking this up. Agreeing to do this at the last minute, you know, I caught him in the 11th hour when he was Johnny on the spot. Uh, at this time, um, our board president, Mr. Mel, we also been joined by the fabulous board member, Dottie Bell, and our... <laughs> and of course, um, our STEAM leader, Dr. Gorey, who's the superintendent. Uh, at this time, I'd like to ask uh, if... Uh, oh, and we're fortunate to have uh, our district attorney. Uh, he's Judge Stewart to me, always will be, who uh, has a tremendous commitment to uh, athletics. Uh, we do a football camp together every summer, and uh, I'd like to say thank you for that, Judge. Again, well, he's a district attorney, but he's Judge now. But uh, Ms. Bell and... Uh, we have an athletic director here, uh, Coach Sykes from Woodlawn. But uh, at this time, I'd like to uh, offer an opportunity for Mr. Tremell and uh, Dr. Gore, if you have anything that you'd like to say to come forward. Okay. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I know you don't. Yeah. Okay, look, usually, you know, women don't stand up to have very much to say as a participant when it's time to participate in athletics. But uh, I write my own rule book, so I'm up here to say this. It's nighttime in the city, so y'all remember I said that, okay? <laughs> we welcome a new coach, and we're very proud of every athlete, athlete here. We're looking for you all to have a wonderful season. But the one thing I want you to keep in mind as you participate in any game, be you, do you, and always respect your other players. And as long as you're on the field doing your very best, no one is a loser. We look forward to you representing Caddo wherever you play. These wonderful men that sit up here, they're gonna give you the best guidance possible. And as long as you have Dr. Gurria as your superintendent, Mr. Tisdale, as the person that's over athletics, as your director, the board that works with you and all of the people on our staffs, we're gonna be pushing for you 100%. I wanna tell you y'all look good. I'm looking forward to y'all doing good, but guess what? It's what time? Nighttime, that's right. Okay. Thank you very much. I certainly would like to start by thanking our media partners for coming out today to help us to promote this uh, historic event. You know, as a 1989 graduate of the Huntington High School, uh, as a member of the Raider football team uh, all four years, I remember how exciting it was uh, to play in the Jamboree. Uh, so much effort has gone into preparing for your season, and the Jamboree is the first time you get to see how everything comes together to work uh, as a team. Uh, so it will be a fun night. It will give you an opportunity to make some, uh, to fine tune some of your skill sets, to make sure that you're running those routes correctly, to make sure that you, in my case, blocking uh, correctly. But one thing I will tell you is that I'm excited because it's an opportunity for us to continue to build upon the importance of team sports and what it really means to be a part of a team. Athletics provides such a solid base to what you will face as you transition into college and even beyond that. So we're so excited to be a school district that does invest in athletics, that does invest in team sports, and more importantly, that invests in children. We love each and every one of you to death. 
We pray that you have a safe game, and we pray that you remember at the end of the day, it is but a game, but it's the life skills that you learn that can never be taken away from you. So looking forward to the jamboree. Uh, since I am superintendent, I will be biased. Uh, and just wish you all well and like to see uh, like to see just a good game. Thank you so much again our media friends for helping us to promote this and to encourage our community to come out and support our student athletes. Thank you. Only thing I have to say, you know I love all you sweet babies. You know I love you sweet babies. But when it comes to that field, who I'm looking at? Raiders, Huntington. Y'all, I want y'all to beat them all in a nice way. In a, you know, I love y'all. I'm going to take pictures with all of you. But I, my rated, I already told the coach. Didn't I tell you, coach? She told me. Uh, she had already gave me word. But anyway, Britta, I am so happy y'all decided to do this. Because we really one big family. One big family. And we're all for you all. But when they come on that field, who do we play first, Raiders? Play Dylan. Beat them. Okay? Thank you. <laughs> I wasn't planning on saying anything, but I couldn't miss the opportunity to, number one, to recognize my homeboy. He's not only just a coach at Booger Washington, but Tony's a little bit younger than me at Ringo, and I watched Tony at Ringo High School to come on to Booger T to be the head coach here, so I am biased too. Booger T is where my heart is, not just because I represent that district, because wherever my homeboy is tearing it down, and I'm going to help him tear it down too. <laughs> Congratulations to all y'all, but just remember, I'm a Booger T line wherever they at. Thank you. All right, once again, thanks everybody for coming out and participating. Uh, Ms. Robinson, Ms. Lars, of course, uh, these type of events don't go on without those people who work behind the scenes. And Ms. Robinson does a tremendous job of holding the athletic department together. Uh, she provides a lot of insight. Uh, she's the one who recognizes those dots to say that you haven't dotted all the I's and those T's certainly need to be crossed. So I appreciate you, Ms. Robinson, for everything that you do. Um, last set of marching orders, guys, of course, we, you know, I know you guys taken lots of pictures and been asked lots of questions, but uh, your presence is still requested. So if everybody could kind of gather up my left, your right, over to meet with uh, the media. We can uh, get a couple of photographs with uh, our superintendent, our board members, uh, and also uh, our district attorney. So at this time, if there are no more questions, uh, comments, or concerns, I'd like to thank you for coming out. Have a great season. I look forward to watching each and every one of you play. Thanks. Outstanding job.